Okay, welcome to this Design Builder webinar, where our two main aims will be, firstly, to give you a general sense of Design Builder's HVAC modeling capabilities, and secondly, to dispel the industry myth that you need different energy modeling software at the early design and detailed design stages. We'll do that by showing you how easy it is to set up an early design model using simple HVAC, and then to switch to detailed HVAC as you move into detailed design. It's good to remind ourselves occasionally how effective modeling can significantly improve building performance and how powerful a tool it can be in the fight against climate change. As buildings account for around 40% of global CO2 emissions, and HVAC systems are generally the most energy intensive aspect of buildings in use, today's topic is clearly an important one. I'm Dave Cocking, and our main presenter today will be Nishesh Jain. One of our expert HVAC support engineers, Wojtek Panek, will join us at the end to help answer your more challenging questions. So after my short introduction, Nishesh will spend most of his time today showing you some key aspects of simple and detailed HVAC modeling in Design Builder's Energy Plus interface. By the end of the webinar, you'll have a clear understanding of the workflow from simple HVAC for early stage modeling through detailed HVAC for detailed design and into building operation. We expect the webinar to last around an hour, including some time at the end to answer as many questions as we can. Please submit your questions at any time via the questions box in the control panel. Nishesh will point out lots of useful resources for learning more about HVAC modeling in Design Builder during his presentation. There are literally hundreds of people attending today, so we will get a lot of questions. We'll answer some of them by text, um, if appropriate, during the webinar. And we'll try to choose the ones that we think are likely to be the most interesting to most of the attendees for um, discussion at the end. If we don't manage to answer your specific question, please do email it to us at the email address we show on the last slides. The webinar is being recorded and you will receive a link to the recording in the next day or so. Before Nishesh dives into the details, let's take a look at how today's HVAC content connects to Design Builder more widely to put it into context. Design Builder is a fully integrated multidisciplinary simulation toolbox. It's a graphical user interface that enables you to use the global gold standard simulation engines, so that's Energy Plus, Radiance, and soon Open Foam in faster, easier, more productive ways. Design Builder is the most capable and mature third-party interface to Energy Plus, which is the simulation engine used by Design Builder. All of these engines are fully integrated with Design Builder's high productivity interface. So all the analyses that you see here can be run seamlessly from a single model. Once you've built your model, either by importing it from a BIM tool or via GBXML or IDF import, or by using Design Builder's industry-leading modeling tools, you can use that one model to assess energy, comfort, and environmental performance, run a large variety of compliance and certification simulations, including LEED and BRIAM, run parametric, design optimization, cost, daylighting and CFD simulations. And Design Builder also includes the most advanced scripting capabilities of all the mainstream simulation tools. 
Today's focus will be on the Energy Plus HVAC and graphical analysis capabilities you can see highlighted at the top left. Okay, so that's my introduction complete. I'll now hand over to Nishesh. Thanks, Dave. Um, so there are uh, two ways to model HVAC systems in Design Builder, simple and detailed HVAC. Simple HVAC is suitable for use at early design stage or for analysis where buildings have heating, cooling, and mechanical ventilation systems, but their detailed assessment is not required. This approach uses energy plus ideal loads mechanism, whereas detailed HVAC is based on energy plus's full systems modeling and uses a graphical interface for the assembly of component based HVAC systems. These are then combined with building models and used in energy plus energy simulations. Now, before I move on to HVAC simulation, I would like to mention that a common practice, HVAC modeling will go through a typical design workflow. It would first start with cooling design and heating design calculations to understand the sizing of the systems and then move onwards to dynamic thermal simulation for calculating the energy use. In this presentation, we are focusing on the simulation aspect of this model. Please look at the heating and cooling design calculation process and its details in our program help and via various tutorials and training videos on the website. So, we will first begin with simple HVAC modeling and understand how it is set and run. As mentioned earlier, this type of simulation is typically suitable for use at early design stages. In a typical HVAC modeling process, first you will set up the model geometry, then you will move from left to right to fill up the model data. Going to the activity tab, you will define here the activity and environmental control options for various spaces. On the construction tab, you will set up the constructions for all opaque envelope elements. Then on the openings tab, you will define window constructions and their operations. On the lighting tab, you will define the load and operation. And then finally, you arrive at the HVAC tab where the simple HVAC settings are defined. You would have noticed that I am using SI units in the webinar. However, it is very easy to switch to IP units as well. Just go to tools, program options, and we can change the units to IP. Now you can see the units have changed to watts per square feet. And if I go to the activity tab, I can see the temperatures are now in Fahrenheit. I'll now revert back to SI. So simple HVAC modeling uses energy plus ideal loads method. And depending on the availability, and operation schedules of the systems and factoring in their COP values, the engine calculates the energy used to condition the building. Simple HVAC allows you to model all these systems, including mechanical ventilation, auxiliary energy, heating, cooling, humidity control, domestic hot water, natural ventilation, etc. Templates can be used to quickly define the system settings as standard and then if required you can change them later currently fan coil unit air cool chiller doas template is loaded however there are several different templates available such as ones with only heating and mechanical ventilation or those with natural ventilation 
template selected determines which of the components of HVAC system are enabled. The template also sets the operating parameters for each of them, such as fuel type, coefficient performance of heating or cooling systems. The current system includes mechanical ventilation, heating and cooling. Therefore, they are all enabled, but they can be switched off as well by unchecking the respective checkboxes. Reviewing them in a bit more detail, starting with mechanical ventilation. Then mechanical ventilation for fresh air delivery can be set per person or based on a fixed rate for a zone or per area basis. When per person or per area option is selected, then the calculation work in conjunction with fresh air requirements set in the activity tab. Here, fresh air requirements are set as per environmental control needs along with other parameters. The calculated air is then controlled based on the operation schedule. Simple HVAC can also allow you to have economizer for free cooling, heat recovery, along with humidity control options. I am reviewing these options quickly here, but more details about how each of these inputs are defined is explained in our encyclopedic program help. To open program help, just go to help, contents, and in the search bar, just type simple HVAC. And it will take you to the appropriate page where you can find the topic mechanical ventilation. Back to the simple HVAC setup. For both heating and cooling, the primary inputs are fuel, COP, and the respective schedules. Definition of COP can vary from country to country and legislative requirements. So you can see the program help for a better understanding. I can summarize COP as the total seasonal efficiency of the entire heating system, including all primary systems and their internal boilers and chiller fans and control equipment. It does not include energy used in air or water distribution via fans or pumps or control gear, etc. These are accounted for in the auxiliary energy section. Because simple HVAC uses energy plus ideal load system, therefore, to calculate the system's energy, these COP inputs are often used and post-processed for the raw energy plus outputs. Please note that HVAC systems operate in accordance to both time schedules here on the HVAC tab and on the activity tab, they link with the heating temperature set points and setback temperatures as well as for the cooling. These settings are quite intuitive once you understand overall modeling workflow and you can refer to program help if in doubt. So if I go to program help and the heating page, then there is a note in green about both the comments I just made. The first note on the top talks about the linkage of activities uh, in the activity tab with the HVAC system. And if I scroll down, then the note here explains about the use of COP in post-processing of energy plus ideal loads outputs. Now back to the model. Other parts of HVAC tab I will point out are domestic hot water and natural ventilation. When using simple HVAC, domestic hot water is modeled using hot water consumption rates defined as per the activity in each zone. This can be either added to the building's 
heating system or can be reported separately as well. The natural ventilation header here provides control over natural ventilation. It can be specified based on a fixed flow value or pressure differential. Natural ventilation controls are driven by schedules and optionally other parameters such as inside and outside air temperature or demand controlled based on CO2 concentrations. Natural ventilation can be configured to work in mixed mode settings as well. The settings for natural ventilation are controlled from here for both simple and detailed HVAC. Natural ventilation is not covered in this presentation, but I can show you some resources that can get you started on NatVent modeling. Firstly, onto the program help. On the natural ventilation page, there are the two modes shown here, scheduled natural ventilation and calculated natural ventilation. These pages have detailed description of the controls and settings. For each of these pages, there is a link on the top to a free basic tutorial, which is based on an earlier version of the software, but basics remain the same. More up-to-date learning content is available on Design Builder's on-demand training. If you go to the Design Builder website, go to training and on-demand training, then at the bottom of the page, you can see the various training packages for Design Builder's functionality such as that for natural ventilation, which covers all three aspects, scheduled natural ventilation, calculated natural ventilation, and mixed mode ventilation operations. Now back to the model. I can now demonstrate running a simple HVAC simulation. I will be modifying some of the values, but I'm not gonna worry about the exact suitability of these numbers for a specific building because the intent here is to show you the process. First, to start with, I will just reload the template. This is to ensure that any changes I might have mistakenly made while showing you other input options are set back correctly. I will change the mechanical ventilation method to by zone and keep it at three air changes per hour. For the sake of demonstration, I can assume that in one part of the building, the system operates differently and the air handling unit has an economizer. So on the first floor west office, I will turn on the economizer and set it to differential dry bulb. Now back to the building level. Assuming that the auxiliary energy includes fans and pumps in ideal loads, it can be set to two watts per meter square. For the heating and cooling sections, I will leave the settings as default, except for the COPs, which I will change for heating to 0 0.8 and for cooling to 3.0. Heating and cooling operation schedules link to the environmental control set point and setback conditions. The heating and cooling set points on the activity tab are 22 and 24 degrees. These are loaded from the activity templates but can be changed if needed. So after the HVAC system configuration is complete with its options defined, COP and operations settings set, we can run the simulation by going on to the simulation tab. In this instance, I will run the simulation for a week and set it to summer design week. I will select the sub hourly results as well. I could select any other simulation period for a full year or even multiple years. And on the options tab, I will select six time steps per hour for more granular understanding of the results. Press OK and the simulation will run quickly. Otherwise, I could have used the simulation manager 
to let the simulation run in background while I continue to work on the model. More on simulation manager can be found on the program help. Now the results are available and we can visualize them in form of graphs. To look at the data more granularly, I will set the interval to sub hourly. And now looking at the system loads data option at the building level, here we can see the system's energy demands. And if I go to fuel breakdown, then we can see the total energy used for various end uses. The results show that cooling is the dominating energy end use, which means that during summer design week, the building might need air conditioning. I can also plot other graphs here, such as adding outdoor air temperature, So now we can see that later during the week, the chiller energy reduces due to reduced outdoor air temperatures. So if I go to first floor east office, I can see zone level results. So actually on a cooler morning, we can see uh, that there is a little bit of preheating because zone goes below the heating set point temperature but otherwise the cooling system maintains the set points. Total fresh air, which is a combination of infiltration and mechanical ventilation is around three air changes per hour plus infiltration and it follows the occupancy schedule. However, if we go to the first floor west office, then adding an economizer in this zone has enhanced the fresh air input. Now it is going up to 15 air changes per hour eliminating the need of using cooling on moderately warm days as seen from the system loads graph for these days. So this covers the key aspects of simple HVAC modeling. For more details on the settings, you can refer to program help. So to program help, and simple HVAC page. This page contains the separate pages for all the sections and also there is a link to an old version tutorial. The on-demand training section has a up-to-date tutorial on simple HVAC under the model data section. So now back to the model. And moving to the next part, which is detailed HVAC. So for uh, more advanced applications during detailed design, advanced HVAC systems calculation may be required. This can be done with detailed HVAC systems. I will switch to detailed HVAC and show you how the same system can be modeled in detail. First, to enable detailed HVAC, I will go to the edit screen and model options. And here we can switch between simple and detailed HVAC. You can see currently simple HVAC is selected and associated settings are defined, such as auxiliary energy calculations are set to separate fans and pumps. You can read more about these in program help. For now, I will just toggle the switch to detailed HVAC and press OK. Now, on the navigation panel, detailed uh, HVAC system settings are available. Going on to the HVAC tab, some of the items are now turned green. That means that they will only be used in heating and cooling design calculations, but not in simulations. Majority of the simulation settings now that are related to systems are defined in detailed HVAC. Here. So the simplest method to load an existing uh, template is done through the template selection. 
and it allows you to quickly set up the HVAC system. And Design Builder provides a lot of pre configured detailed templates, such as the ones that are with air source heat pumps, um, chilled ceilings and radiant systems, DOAS systems, fan coil units, ground source heat pumps, VAV systems, VRFs, etc. So once you select a system, then you can see its diagrammatic preview in the window and you can see heating and cooling heat pumps, a condenser loop and then the whole thing connected to the air handling unit coils, heated floors and chill beams to supply to the zone. Beside these systems, there are also pre-configured templates for ASHRAE 90.1 systems. These are typically used during LEED and ASHRAE 90.1 modeling when correct systems are needed to be assigned for ASHRAE 90.1 baseline model. Design Builder's automated LEED ASHRAE 90.1 modeling takes care of it if you create a model for that purpose. At this point, I'll show you another area with learning resources. So I go to program help. And at the bottom, support and tutorials and this page of modeling guides and tutorial has numerous get you started type modeling guides and help tutorials. And they are spread across the help, but this page brings it all in one place. Um, and you can see them arranged with sections. For example, at the top, there is a modeling guide for Design Builder Lead ASHRAE 90.1 Appendix G User Guide. And this is defined here. Go back, there is also a report for uh, Lead MEPC Report Generation Guide. Now back to the model. Um, and let's load the DOAS with DCV and fan coil template to all zones. This is the same HVAC system that we modeled in simple HVAC. And this system has four components, three loops, which is the air loop, the chill water loop, and the hot water loop. And the fourth component, that is the zone group, which contains all the zones having the HVAC system. So hot water loop provides hot water to heating coils in various components such as air handling unit or the fan coil unit in the zone. And if I edit the loop level, then sizing and operational details of overall loop are defined here. This includes the projected exit and return temperatures, and these values here are used for auto sizing the HVAC system in Energy Plus. Note this auto sizing is what I'm referring to here is the pre simulation auto sizing and not the heating and cooling design calculations that I mentioned earlier. Plant equipment operations here define the sequencing of the system if there are more than one equipment in the loop currently because there's just one boiler. On the navigator list, I can see that hot water loop is made up of two sub loops, which is the demand side and the supply side. The supply side sub loop itself contains a boiler, splitter and mixer, a supply pump and a hot water loop set point manager. The splitters and mixers in the supply loop provide the connections that enable you to add more plant side equipment. And these can be things such as a heat pump or a generator or even a additional boiler to work alongside the existing one. I can just add a new equipment and then 
use connect components to connect it so this connect components only allow you to connect the correct components with each other and i can delete this now so at the component level um, you can go to each item and change its properties for example in the boiler we can look at the fuel type the sizing factors the efficiency curves and the boiler we selected is a generic boiler but you can add your own curves or boiler details from manufacturer data as well and this customization is possible for all system components modeled in detailed HVAC. The supply subloop includes a set point manager and at the moment it is set by default to control the hot water flow temperature to a constant 80 degrees celsius there are range of schedules available for you to select or you can define your own the arrow position of the set point manager symbol shows that it is controlling the flow temperature in the supply subloop just after the boiler and supply mixer the demand subloop is automatically connected with the supply subloop here via gray link lines between the connection nodes the demand subloop itself contains a splitter a mixer and branches and these branches allow flow connections to be made to parallel branches it's like pipes branching from a main supply pipe or headers in real systems and all connections to zone level equipment are made on the demand side of the loops for example if there was another type of heating zone unit say radiant heating cooling or on the floor walls or ceiling then additional equipment can be added in a zone group so i'll just go to a zone and quickly add a radiant floor here then going back to the demand side of the heating sub heating loop i can connect the radiant floor to the hot water loop splitter and mixer using connect components and done so i'll go back to the zone actually and remove this radiant floor for now because setting it up require more settings to be changed in the model and we have limited time in the presentation so i'll show you uh, resources where you can learn more about radiant system modeling very shortly um, so then going back to the HVAC system so like the hot water loop um, the chill water loop here provides chill water to cooling coils in components such as uh, air handling units zone air distribution units and chill beams and ceilings and similar to the hot water loop here we have got the sizing and operational details of the overall loop are defined at the loop level The chill water loop also includes similarly the demand side and supply side subloops and supply side subloop has very similarly to the hot water loop or chiller and set point manager pumps uh, splitters and mixers currently we have a air cool chiller here 
but if we had a water cool chiller then we would have a separate condensing loop as well so the air loop is where we have the dedicated outdoor air system this doa system is currently selected to be cav type which is often used in small office type buildings because it is simpler to install and operate in spaces which have a stable that is less diversified usage across the zones heat recovery is important in cav systems and heat recovery element can be seen in the ahu box so if i go to the air handling unit and edit it then on the outdoor air system tab here i can see the check check box for heat recovery is selected there are more ahu components that can be defined here such as recirculation additionally like other places in detailed hvac you can add more equipment in ahus such as humidifiers and you can also remove them so the last part of the detailed hvac is um, zone groups i briefly went into the zone groups earlier to add an additional zone unit but now i will explain it in a bit more detail zone groups are fast ways of enabling hvac schematic representations only because one set of equipments and connections are needed to be defined for the whole group adding components to the zone group adds them to every zone in the group all zones served by the same hvac system then are combined into one group and all different parts of the building served by different systems would be in different groups for example there may be scenarios where air conditioning is provided in occupied office spaces but in toilets only heating via radiator is provided going into a zone and like with other loops at the top zone level sizing parameters are defined such as heating and cooling sizing factors you can make changes here and then on the target tab select the zones in which that change needs to be applied that change can be made only in the selected zone or to all other zones all zones in the zone group must have the same hvac equipment but you can vary the data for the zone equipment such as its availability or zone unit capacities or efficiencies for example if i go to first floor circulation zone in the zone group i can disable the fan coil unit uh, as it might be redundant due to the circulation area in this building being a double height space so i can go to the fan coil unit edit it and then on the availability schedule i will make it to be off then i will go to the target tab and check that this change is applied to this zone only and not the other zones press okay so i showed you earlier that more than one zone unit can be specified in a zone by having a radiant heating system along with a fan coil unit a common example of multiple zone components might be modeling a dx zone based system in a zone that is also occupied outside normal working hours when the centralized system that normally serves the zone has been switched off so if you go to our webinars page where we have the past webinars so if you go to training and webinars then scrolling down the webinar on making energy plus viable for industry energy modelers shows you how you can quickly model multiple zone systems our past webinars are another free resource for learning advanced aspects and application of design builder modeling for example this maximizing the return on investment from your energy plus model 
uses simple HVAC modeling and amongst other aspects, it is explaining how to model natural ventilation and mixed mode strategies for passive design and to quantify the overheating risk in naturally ventilated buildings. So back to the model and at the system level. So in this demo, we added the detailed HVAC system using templates. You could also build the schematic from scratch as well by adding new loops. You can select the preferred loop to start with and then modify it as you start working with the system and add new components and connections. For example, you can start with adding a generic hot water plant loop and then as I demonstrated before, you can connect it to the water loop and zone group components using the connect components system to complete the schematic. So the system is mainly defined and controlled in detailed HVAC section here. However, certain model option settings we have to define some of them in the model data tabs as well. So at the building level, if I go to the activity tab, then the set points and the setback temperatures in the environmental control options still control the system operation along with the schedules of operation in the HVAC tab. So these are the main detailed HVAC setup requirements. And now I can show you the results you can typically get from detailed HVAC modeling. I'll go to the simulation screen. And this time I will run a simulation for a interseasonal week. So from 7th of April to 13th April. And I'll keep the sub hourly selected on the options tab, time steps as is six. And then the outputs tab. This is a tab I skipped last time around to avoid repetition, but uh, we can define all the type of outputs that we want in this area. Depending on the selection under the graphable output section internal gains and energy related outputs are reported as well as the environmental option provides details about zone temperatures etc however with detailed hvac we can get more specific outputs that are related to the system so on the miscellaneous outputs tab we can get hvac systems node level results for temperature and mass flow rates at input and output of each system component. I will select the HVAC system temperatures. And besides this, we can also generate specific energy plus summary reports, such as um, those for lead or annual building utility performance summary, standard 62.1 summary, HVAC sizing summary or component sizing summary amongst others. Simulation manager is the feature that allows you to manage simulations and optionally run it on a server network or on cloud using the JES simulation server. See the info panel link for more information. To demonstrate the simulation manager, I will select the simulation manager options and start running the simulation. Simulation manager allows you to store simulation runs for a later comparison of two or more runs against each other. You can learn more about simulation manager in program help. Now the run is complete. I can load the results back into design builder. The sub hourly results for fuel breakdown are available at the building level here. We can see that now uh, heating is the main energy consumer with some chiller operation that is happening in the week. 
so if i go to the first floor east zone and the results show that the system is maintaining heating and cooling set points of 22 and 24 degrees celsius respectively but there is no simultaneous heating and cooling as there is a two degree dead band between the heating and cooling set points the summary tab shows the summary reports that we requested so on the list of contents we can see the component sizing summary and similarly hvac sizing summary standard 62.1 summary and lead summary etc the other special detailed hvac output that i selected was system node temperatures as that is not a standard graphable output we can see them in results viewer and i had opened the last simulation run results in the results viewer i can press that icon over here for viewing results in results viewer and it should opens yeah so this is the result set now open in results viewer and results viewer is a standalone energy plus results viewing tool it enables you to visualize all simulation results including the special ones which do not form a part of standard results display if i go to the time step tab here i can see the various um, energy plus outputs under report types and different areas such as energy used for different hvac components at the top then scrolling down i can see site related outputs then system node temperatures that i specifically requested and at the bottom there is zone level results for temperatures and gains etc as with design builders main application you can change the units of results viewer from si to ip very easily as well you can just change the units from the toggle so i'll try to review um, a typical example result set of seeing how temperatures that are reported across the air handling unit to understand how it is operating for that i will first start with outside temperature of the air which is under the environment section and site outdoor air dryable temperature then i will sort by area so that all the ahu related outputs are together and i will now supply select the supply side outlet temperature so system node supply side outlet it is the temperature that exits the air handling unit and it is fixed to 18 degrees by a set point manager now there is heat recovery in this ahu and we can see that what temperature leaves that heat recovery passed after the fresh air from the outside is made to exchange heat with the return air so i can find the node temperature for air handling unit uh, mixed air outlet so this is the temperature of the air after picking up the heat from the heat recovery it shows that the heat recovery sometimes makes the temperature quite high more than the one required by the outlet this would mean that uh, cooling would be needed to bring down the temperature to 18 degrees celsius and if i look at the cooling coils total cooling rate in a new graph then i can see here that there is um, cooling happening and we can see that the coil actually is working to cool down the air again which was warmed up by the heat recovery these graphs therefore show that there is a definitive potential for some optimization of operations here it is a good example of where results viewer can complement the standard result set to help us understand detailed hvac operations similar analysis can be done for various other parts of the system 
and any operating issues and inefficiencies can be identified so this demonstration showed some detailed hvac capabilities but there are possibilities to simulate numerous other system types and configurations so i have uh, picked out some of them and i'll try to show them on the slides so first heat pumps in design builder you can model water source ground source and air source heat pumps also there are numerous resources available to get you up and running with them to model on the program help let me go there again support tutorials modeling guides you can see uh, there is a help tutorial on ground source heat pump and also on air to water heat pumps a key aspect here is all the step by step um, instructions and then there are other resources available um, to help you with ground modeling a very important aspect is actually being able to generate the uh, heat pump coefficients from manufacturers data and this page gives you step by step um, guidance on uh, doing that um, another aspect of uh, ground heat exchanger modeling is the size of vertical ground heat exchangers so to help you with the sizing if you search for GLHE Pro and you will find the relevant page and here if I scroll down then simple and detailed sizing methods for um, the exchanger are explained including at the end a way of importing GHE IDF file formats is explained on the webinars page uh, we have got this um, design and modeling of ground source heat pump systems webinar you can learn more about practical aspects of ground heat exchanger design and simulation uh, for a project work by watching this webinar besides this uh, the webinar on using energy modeling to optimize ground source heat pump system design can also be quite useful so slides besides central systems you can model only systems using uh, which are contained within a zone such as simple electric radiators package terminal units and vrf systems uh, for vrfs design builder uses a performance curve approach and design builder uh, has systems and utilities available to help you in the process um, and provides a set of spreadsheets that contain all the necessary formulae to generate these curves to find those you can go to the website download and release software and on that page if you scroll to the bottom then um, we have got this vrf curve utilities generator and uh, that effectively provides you the spreadsheets on the webinars page there is a webinar for vrf webinar uh, vrf systems webinar and it covers the basics including how to generate the performance curves from manufacturer data the earlier webinar on designing of uh, ground source heat pump systems um, this one actually shows you how to pair a ground heat exchanger with a water cooled vrf system and the webinar shows performance of ground source based vrf system comparing it with that of a air cooled vrf system so it might be quite useful so generator component uh, of design builder enables you to simulate cogeneration systems also known as combined heat and power systems and also tri generation systems also known as combined cooling heating and power systems 
Additionally, we have options for modeling storage through buffer vessels and that include hot and cold buffer vessels and then ice thermal storage. Program help consists of um, examples for their control and operation schemes. So you can just search for them and you will find it. The fluid to fluid heat exchanger component. Um, this one is the most versatile of all components. I would say um, it allows you to couple the supply side of one plant or condenser loop to the demand side of another plant or condenser loop. The generic nature of the heat exchanger component means that it can be configured for use in a simulation where two loops need to be connected together. This fluid to fluid heat exchanger can be used with chill water loops, hot water loops, condenser loops, ground source systems, etc. And some common applications include uh, modeling these. Uh, for example, in this example, this air source heat pump is coupled with supplementary heating from a boiler using the heat exchanger. In this example, the heat exchanger is used to supply hot water at different temperatures from the same boiler. In this example, we have an option to uh, bypass the chiller to directly use the condenser loop as a water side economizer using the heat exchanger. And in this example, heat exchanger is used in a system with VRF water cool system and heat recovery for domestic hot water. So these are just some of the systems and configurations that are possible to model in Design Builder. But the versatility of Design Builder modeling does not stop there. While typical model settings, which I showed you right now, will allow you to model your systems with lots of flexibility. Scripting tools take it to the another level. Specify specifically um, using Energy Plus EMS, which can control simulations during runtime. More advanced controls can be configured. EMS used in detailed HVAC can span from a very simple script to control start time based on outside air temperature, as it is shown here. To complex operation schemes controlling multiple system components with a number of different sensors. In the software, you will find many pre configured scripts and learning resources and tutorials for these. So, I've already showed um, some of the resources that are available to model specific systems related to detailed HVAC along with past webinars. However, if you are looking for a starting point, of engaging with detailed design builder um, uh, HVAC systems, then our on-demand training. Um, so this one um, has the answer. It has dedicated up-to-date modeling and learning resource on detailed HVAC. It covers setting up of zone groups and modeling of simple VRF systems, hot water loops, chill water loops and air loops with fan coil units, and then also heat exchangers and radiant surfaces. Also, if I go to the tutorials page, uh, we are in the process of updating and upgrading free short tutorials on basic design builder modeling and its various features. So if you are uh, interested, then keep an eye out for that by subscribing to our newsletter and by following us on LinkedIn, where we regularly post content on software news, upcoming events and webinars along with tips and tricks.